the line of disciplic succession from our Bhagavad Gita. Ishwara Puri was the spiritual master of Lord Chaitanya. Madhavendra Puri was his spiritual master. Tomorrow we're going to hear about Madhavendra Puri. And his appearance day is also today. But we'll hear about him tomorrow. And then following Lord Chaitanya, there are Here comes our artist. <laughs> Very creative on the wall. <laughs> so, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, of course, there were many of the direct associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but the principal in our list of Bhagavad Gita is Rupa Goswami, but then also in parentheses. Sanatana Goswami and Sarupa to name a few. And then uh, next in the line of the separate succession, Jiva Goswami and Raghunath Das Goswami. And then there are three, of course, one is listed commonly, but Narakam Das Thakur, Srinivasacharya, and Shamananda. Now those are names that some of you are a little familiar with, some of you are not at all familiar with. But as you continue your life in Krishna consciousness, you'll hear those names again and again, and they, they start to emerge, just like you know, Yudhisthira and Nima and Arjuna, Nikola and Sande. You know, all these names start to take on a personality in the life. So Srinivasacharya is one of those great personalities. Um, you'll, hear, you'll hear this again, but Lord Chaitanya said before he was even born, he predicted his birth, gave his name, said that he will be the embodiment of pure love for me. Through Rupa and Sanatha, he sets this in like a trance, like a okay, to permit the discernment. Rupa and Sanatha will write my books, and through Srinivas, the, this wisdom will be earned and distributed throughout the land. So all three of them, Srinivas, Shamananda, and Narakam, did like that. But he's a, a very important person. Yeah, three times. Very, very, very important person. Because traditionally, um, when a great personality revives or begins or something, in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's case, you just revive the teachings of the disciplic succession. But after that great personality's departure, generally the first or the second generation things start to go fade. But it didn't. After Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Rupa, and Sanatan, and the other Goswami, the other four, but then Jiva, because he was the nephew, the next generation Jiva, Raghunath Das was also very young. And then following Jiva, these three. So they continued and very widely fulfilled the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu throughout the, the areas of India that they were assigned to. They were assigned to places that they were from, but they and each of them had a particular style. But amongst the three, uh, specifically, Srinivas was known and had the, the characteristic of highly skilled in speaking. So we'll hear something about his life. Srinivas Acharya. Yeah. 
Shri Vasacharya was born in this month, Vishakha, in the year 14, excuse me, 1530. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's appearance was 1486. You know, by European picture of what was really important that was going on was in Europe Christopher Columbus was finding out what the world was flat around. When we were little he had his little saying in 1492 Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Remember that one? Did you live that one? Oh. Remember? <laughs> in 1492 yes. Columbus sailed the ocean blue. You know, they found Spain. This is, you know, American history with Spanish names. The names of the ships are known. Nina, Pinta, and Santa Maria. They got in three boats, and they got in a boat to see if the world was flat around. Because there was an idea, Christopher Columbus had this bright idea, the world is round, and if we go that way, we can get to India and get spices and nice things. But they bumped into America because they didn't know what was over there. That was what was going on in Europe, this round, in this world flat or round. And four years, six years before that, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu So that was 1486, and the birth year of Srinivas was 1530. So some four, roughly some four years before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ended his pastimes is when Srinivas was born. And here's the, the history. His father was named Gangadhar Bhattacharya, a very respected Brahmana, and um, Vaishnav Brahmana. And he had developed, not by personal association, but was what was going on in the land at the time is he had become a very devoted to Nimai Pandit. Nimai Pandit was the name before he was given his sannyas name. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or Sri Krishna Chaitanya. So Gangadhar, uh, that there's those of you that have not been to Mayapur or the areas around Mayapur, I'm just going to use my hand. Mayapur is, you know, in West Bengal. So, you know, over here is Puri, and over here is the mouth of the Ganges. It goes into the Bay of Bengal. And Navadvip is up here. It's kind of northwest of Ganga Sagara, the area where the Ganga flows into the so north of Calcutta. And surrounding, mainly in the eastern and northeastern direction, there are a number of centers of Vajitanya's devotees. One of them is where he took some, I'm going to mention names. So if you don't remember the names, that's okay. But one of them is Katwa. Katwa is where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted sannyas. Near, not far from Katwa, you know, the, the, the driving distance between Mayapur and Katwa is about three hours, depends on how bad the roads are. Driving by taxi or bus, three hours. And in a shorter distance away is Sri Kanda. They're, but they're all, you know, reasonably close, and they had, 
relationships amongst one another. Sri Kanda is a place where you'll hear his name several times. Nara Hari, just like in our Purana Arti, you hear the name Nara Hari. Nara Hari um, was one of the leaders of Sri Kanda. When you visit someday, hopefully you'll be able to visit Sri Kanda. And it, just as you're walking, it's, re it's a little remote. But as you're walking into Shikanda, you feel something like this is a really spiritual place. Because it was the center of very elevated Vaishnavas, headed by, there were two brothers and a son of one of those two brothers, Nada Hari. And there was a, a royal physician and his son. His son is Raghunanda. Raghunanda is the one who, when his father went away to take care of some service, he offered that the boy, the little boy, was told to take care of the deity, the deity of Gopinath. And the deity ate everything from the boy's offering. The plate was gone, empty. His mother thought, oh, well, maybe he ate the offering, he didn't offer some deity. It's just a little boy. Anyway. He, he was celebrated as being a, a great worshiper. His father came back and said, what happened? He said, the deity ate it all. He said, do it again today. He watched him. The deity ate when the boy started to die. He said, that day. So, Raghunandan was famous for deity worship. His father was a royal physician and And his father's brother, Nada Hari, was a very, very elevated uh, writer of Vaishnava literature. And you'll read about him in Chaitanya Shirtama. The little the rest of Sri Kanda were given the responsibility of making the ropes for the Jagannath cart, because one time the ropes broke. They're all connected to Lord Chaitanya. Narahari's Nara name is way up there in personalities that are important as followers of Lord Chaitanya. And Shikanda, Katwa, Yajigram. Yajigram is the place where Srinivasacharya's mother, named Vishnu Priya, where she was born. And her Vishnu Priya's father was a very elevated Vaishnava and particularly gifted, among other things, in astrology. He did an astrological chart for Srinivas when he was born and concluded that he's a Mahapurusha, especially, exceptionally big personality. And then there's a place where Gangadhar father of Srinivas lived, and Chakandi. So these are just names, but they're, 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 as you learn, they emerge from the, the map of a blur of names. So there's a certain mood in each of those places, you know, like Anstinapur, the different Indraprastha, all those names, because you're familiar with Mahabharata, they mean something to you. So for the followers of Lord Chaitanya, these places are all very important. So Gangadhar, he was feeling uh, a desire to take Lord Chaitanya's association. At that time, Lord Chaitanya was young, 24. But the opulent, one of the five opulences of the personality of God that is, is fame or his influence, he had thousands and tens of thousands of followers. No one was a disciple, just they loved him. He's the personality of Godhead, appearing as if he's one of them. And they loved him. So Gandhidhar went to see him, take his association, and on his way, he stopped the Katwa. 
on the very day that Lord Chaitanya was to take sannyas. And there's detail. This narration is from a book called Bhakti Ratnakar. It was written after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's disappearance. And it describes the initiation ceremony, as do the other biographies of Lord Chaitanya, describe his initiation, sannyas initiation. And the details and details and details. And when the barber, whose name was Madhu, is very famous because in Katwa there's a samadhi for the barber. He's a celebrity. Hair of Lord Chaitanya also has a samadhi. And the great Acharya who resided there, or and one of Lord Chaitanya's associates later, not at this time, but Gadadhar Das, not to be mistaken, Gadadhar Pandit, but Gadadhar Das, his samadhi is there. And Prakashananda, no, the Keshava Bharati, who was the, was the sannyas guru. So as the barber was cutting his hair, everyone was weeping. It's a lengthy description, Bhaktivinoda and Chaitanya Bhagavad, because they were used to seeing their beloved Nimai with long flowing hair and his arms raised and dancing and all those nice paintings where he's in this householder stage of life. Now he's giving up his household life, it's not just his hair. But they know what that means when he takes sannyas, that they may not see him ever again. So they're weeping and crying and took Madhu the whole day to cut his hair. And then when it came to the formal initiation and the mantra, sannyas mantra was given, he then pronounced his name, Sri Krishna Chaitanya. And the significance, you probably heard this many times. But this is um, in the Bharati Sampradaya, it's the name of a brahmachari. Brahmachari means an assistant of a sannyasi. And it was arranged that he would take the name, not of a sannyasi, but the name of a brahmachari assistant of a sannyasi, but Sri Krishna Chaitanya. And when Gangadhar heard that, and he realized it's, it's now not just an idea, it's done, he's taken sannyas. He may never see him again. He was speechless stunned, literally. And he, he went back to his home in Chakhandi and informed his wife of what happened. And she was in disbelief also because they were very devoted to Lord Chaitanya. Or Nimai Pandit, now Sri Krishna Chaitanya. So for nearly a month, Gangadha was in this daze. He just went around throughout the village, wherever he went, just saying, Shri Krishna Chaitanya. Shri Krishna Chaitanya. Couldn't say anything else. They thought he'd gone mad. So he, they started calling him Chaitanya Das. So Gangadha, Bhattacharya became now Chaitanya Das. Some time passed and Chaitanya Das told his wife, um, they had no children and they had no intention to have children, but surprisingly there was this strong urge that he wanted to have a son. And she confided in her husband, <clears throat> I've been having the same urge, and it's, I don't I understand it because we've already discussed this again and again. We, we were not planning to have children, but since we had this other idea, now we have this idea. Let us go, with her suggestion, 
let us go get confirmation from Vajitanya and his blessing before we proceed. And so they leave. And um, the first place they went was to her mother and father's place, which is Yajikram, not far. They spent some time um, with her father. And then they went to Puri. And when they reached Puri, there's different descriptions. <coughs> but Lord Chaitanya saw them from a distance, and they saw him from a distance, and they paid obeisances. And Lord Chaitanya then and there turned to Govinda and said, they have a strong desire. Lord Jagannath will fulfill their desire. They, will, they, they want a son. And they will have a son, and his name will be Srinivas, and he'll be the embodiment. I mean, all this is spoken, and then it happened again. His, this is in Bhakti Ratnapar specifically. He will be the embodiment of love for me, and through Rupa and Sanatan. So this is where Lord Chaitanya is now about 44 years old. And he only lived till he was 48. So it doesn't leave a lot of time before when he leaves the world. And the past times concluding. Um, Rupa and Sanatan will write literatures, and through Srinivas and others, this knowledge of their writings, of, from, of my teachings, will be distributed throughout the land. So he pronounced, and they were all surprised who was this person. He never saw this person. Giving special honor to him. So they, they came to see Lord Chaitanya, as the devotees would sometimes do, in Gambira, even before seeing the deity. And Lord Chaitanya said, Go see Lord Jagannath, pray to him, and all your desires will be fulfilled. Then again, he said it in this meditation mood, like a trance, and repeated his message. Um, after they came back, he informed them, you will have a son, his name will be Srinivas, and you should take care of him because through him, the, the message of devotion to Krishna will be spread far and wide. This is before the famous person, like Maharaj Pritchett was famous before he was born, and Srinivas was famous even before he was conceived. He knew his name and everything about him. So they went back to their home after some time. Srinivas was born, again I mentioned. Um, Balaram Vipra was her father's name, but he performed the name-giving ceremony in all the rituals and announced the son will be a Mahapurusha and confirmed the name Srinivas as given by Lord Chaitanya. Uh, he was entrusted as he, he did all, you know, because there's a Brahmana family, very capable Brahmana family. So, um, all the rituals were performed. This name is another, just uh, so many names, but Dhananjaya Vidya Vachaspati became his teacher. And very quickly, Srinivas mastered all the teachings of his teacher. And meanwhile, Lord Chaitanya, back in Jagannath Puri, two messages went the messenger to, to Rupa and Sanatan, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu announced that um, Srinivas will one day come. Please take care of him. He's very dear to me. And Lord Chaitanya requested second. He requested Gadadhar Pandit. You know from the Panchatattva, Sri Krishna Chaitanya. So Gadadhar was a very ex 
expert in reciting Bhagavatam as well as worshiping his deity Gopinath. So he gave this instruction to the Dhatma. You train Srinivas in Srimad Bhagavatam. There was an intention behind it because when his pastime could be over, it was one thing to be able to maintain the Dhatma's life that service. So through this, it said, Chaitanya Das, being very scholarly, he knew Krishna's pastime in Vrindavan. So he elaborately explained all of that to his son. And uh, the pastime of Lord Chaitanya and the mysteries of Lord Chaitanya's activities, he heard from his father. And from his mother, she was also learned, but especially gifted in music. So later on, those two skills became very useful. He was very skilled in using or accompanying his narration skills with his musical skills, which he learned and reached initially from his mother. Um, from when he completed his studies from Dhananjaya Vachaspati, he heard about Narahari. Again, these are villages that are not so far from one another. He heard about this exalted Vaishnava, Narahari. So he went to take his association. And in Narahari's association, who was vastly learned, he learned so much more than he had learned from anyone previous to him. And he requested Narahari to give him mantra diksha. And Narahari declined, saying, Mahaprabhu wants you to take mantra diksha from Gopal Bhatta Goswami, which is what eventually happened. It took some time. But he, Srinivas, accepted Narahari as a Shikshu Guru. Some time passed, so he's now a young man. And when he went back to his place in Chakhandi, his father passed away. So the Vaishnavas were pacifying Srinivas and his mother, and a decision was made that he would, that the two, the son and the mother, would go to her mother and father's village, Rajivram. So they went and took shelter there. Again, Srinivas, liking the association of Nadahari, would regularly make visits, hear from him. Eventually, Nadahari advised him. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was soon going to wind up his pastimes. You should go and take his association. So he'd heard all about him, but he never had his direct personal association because he's still very young. So he appealed fervently to his mother and gave him permission and seeing how determined her son was, she agreed. So when other devotees were going to Puri, he went with them. And on his way, they visited other places. But as they were approaching Puri, he heard, he saw people leaving Puri looking very sad. And asking them, why are you so sad? They could hardly speak. But one spoke and said that Mahaprabhu had left this world. So Srinivas had lost his father, now he's lost Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And highly learned, but also very devoted, he thought, of, how, how does this happen? Without the association of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, what is my life worth? And he thought of just like leaving his body, giving up his body, giving up his life. That night, Lord Chaitanya appeared to him in a dream and said, Don't despair. I made an arrangement for Ganadha Pandit to train you in Srimad Bhagavatam. Go to Puri, take his association. So, hearing that instruction, instructions, there's many such incidences. 
and Sri Vasa's life. Some superior gives him some instruction, and he just moves with that instruction, life and soul. So he went to Kauri. He found Gadadhar Pandit, and as soon as they saw one another, because Gadadhar was told to instruct him, Lord Chaitanya said, take instruction from Gadadhar. So there was this affection for one another immediately. And there are different versions, but Gadadhar was very happy to train him. There was a difficulty, and that was that Gadadhar Pandit was so accustomed to reading Srimad Bhagavatam and crying while he was reading Srimad Bhagavatam that the manuscript had all become blurry. It was hard to instruct him in a blurry manuscript because we didn't have printed literature. So a suggestion was made that Narahari will have a copy. I'll send a Brahmin a messenger to him. Narahari said, yes, I have a copy. Send a messenger and I'll give you the copy. So Gadadhar said, you go. But when, when you go, um, come back quickly because I don't know how long I'm going to be able to live with the feelings of separation from what you tell me. So as happens as in a whole series of cases, Srinivas, Srinivas, Srinivas wanted to take the association of exalted devotees of Lord Chaitanya, Krishna Pandit, Sri Damodar, and so on and so on and so on. Jagatananda Pandit, so many other personalities. It said he went to find a king, but the king was in seclusion because after Lord Chaitanya's life had, had departed from this world, it was hard for him just to bear that separation. Could you all come closer instead of you out of the balcony seats back there? Many personalities, Ramananda Roy, Sukdamadar, so many personalities. And he got the book, the Bhagavatam, from Nadahari, but the, by the time he returned back to Puri, Gadadhar Pandit had left. So he was again devastated. Gadadhar Pandit appeared in the dream and told him. You should go take the association of Rupa and Sanatana. They will instruct you. Lord Chaitanya had said this long ago, take the association of Rupa and Sanatana. So he started to make his journey to visit the place he had never visited yet on his way to see Lord Chaitanya, to Rupa Vrindavan. He stopped in Navadvipa. Before he got to Navadvipa, he heard following Lord Chaitanya's departure, Advaita Acharya and Lord Nityananda had departed. Again, he was devastated. Again, he appeared in a dream. He said, Continue, go on your way to Vrindavan and meet Rupa and Sanatana. He stayed at the home, he was invited to stay at the home of Mother Sachi. Um, Bhangsi Badan was the name of uh, one who was serving in Ishan was another who was serving Mother Sachi. And there he met Lakshmi Priya. And Lakshmi Priya, the devotion of his mother and Lakshmi Priya was just amazing. So Vishnu Priya. So um, he spent some time, met other associates there with names, and a whole long list of names that you're very familiar with from Chaitanya Charitamrita, and then continued on his journey. Each of the places he went, he was doing what Vaishnavas do, seeking their blessings. And he was already 
extremely qualified. And this is part of what makes one qualified is elevated personality seeking their blessings. Now, in hearing about Buddha Tantra's pastime, hearing the teachings that they have learned from him, that he was becoming filled with devotion and filled with knowledge about his worship of Buddha Tantra. And stopped in other places the Buddha Tanya had visited because he learned the places that he had gone met the devotees in those places, heard about Rajitanya and his teachings and to serve see their blessings in just before on the outskirts of Vrindavan he heard that Rupa and Sanatana had left the world. And again devastated. And Rupa and Sanatana appeared in their dream saying, take shelter Gopal Bhatta Goswami was Lord Chaitanya's desire long, long ago that you would receive mantra diksha from him. So he went. He received mantra diksha from Gopal Bhatta, who entrusted his study, further study, to Jiva Goswami. Jiva Goswami prayed to his deity, Radhadamadar, that Radhadamadar give your blessings, full blessings. And Jiva Goswami hearing, because he had heard from others in the course of his studies, hearing his recitation of Rupa Goswami's teaching, you know, we have nectar devotion, which is Prabhupada's rendering of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. And then there's the graduate study of that called Ujvala Nilamani. And he heard him ex explaining Rupa Goswami's Ujwala Nilamani, he's a portion of it. And Jiva Goswami was so pleased that he gave him this title, Srinivasacharya. And so to this day, he knows by that name, Srinivasacharya. If anybody has one of those cell phones, could you put it in vibrate or off mode? It's a little extra. Just check to see. studied under Jiva Goswami. So the, the three, Srinivasacharya, Naratam Das Thakur, in our mind of this different succession, Naratam's name is there. Sometimes I've seen Srinivasa's name rather than Naratam's name, but they're contemporaries. And Shamananda. Jiva Goswami told Srinivas to visit all the places of Krishna's pastimes under the direction of Raghava Goswami. Raghava Goswami is a very celebrated person described in, in Bhakti Ratna, Bhakti Ratnakar. He lived for all these in Vrindavan. He was very familiar with Braja, kind of like our modern Dinabandhu. And uh, he took Srinivas on a tour all the places of Krishna's pastimes. So he's very, very rich in philosophical understanding and pure devotion and blessings of the Vaishnavas, embodiment of love for Lord Chaitanya, all these wonderful qualifications. And then at a certain point in time, having trained them all, the three, Jiva Goswami had the first traveling Sankirtan card. He had gathered up in a library, had many brahmanas making handwritten copies of the Goswami literatures and loaded it all up on the bullet cards and told them to go preach throughout the land. And so they did, until they had a problem. And the problem was when they, no thank you, no thank you. When they reached the kingdom of Vishnupur, and the king was Deer Hamir. Uh, there was this rumor 
that here comes three pilgrims and they got a whole cartload of jewels and valuables. So the king consulted his astrologer who confirmed jewels and valuables. So the king en enlisted some robbers to go get those jewels and valuables with, with the commitment, don't harm them physically at all. So when the robbers came in the dead of night and they were sleeping, having traveled long distance, they took the cart, not just the stuff on the cart, they took the cart. And when the three woke up and saw the cart was missing, they were devastated. And then considered what to do, what to do, what to do. They had been given some assignment by Jiva Goswami, so Naratam went to one place, the place where he hailed from. Shamananda from another place where he hailed from. And Srinivas volunteered, or somehow was decided, he would stay and try to find out where the books went. So he inquired and inquired and inquired, and he found out most likely the king will know. He has some kind of engaged robbers, and he thought it was valuables. Somehow, find out from the king where the boat, the cargo of books are. So he developed a strategy. And the strategy is he heard that the king really, really liked hearing Bhagavad Gita. So he went to the, the place where the king's uh, capital was. And he let it be known that he can speak Bhagavad Gita. So immediately the king invited him, and every day, every day, every day, every day, he just spoke Bhagavad Gita. The king really liked what he heard. Very, very moved. He became softened. Now when he when he looked at the the, the cart, like that, looked at the cart, he was expecting to see gold and diamonds and all kinds. He saw books. He felt double sad. One was it wasn't gold and diamonds, it was books. But then another is he stole a book from Sadhus. That's that's really bad. But we know what to do, what to do. So he just kept the book in the same place. And at the right time, because he was diplomatic, at the right time, Srinivas explained the dilemma. The books were taken, what you know he might have some knowledge where they are. And the king confessed everything. Apologized profusely, returned the books. He, the king, his queen, his son, and his whole entourage in the government service all became disciples of Srinivas Acharya. So that kingdom, the Vishnupur, became a, a an important seat of spreading the teachings of Lord Chaitanya through this misfortune became good fortune. The king became an initiated devotee and you know, spread Krishna consciousness in throughout his kingdom. Very significant, dramatic. So after spending some time with the king, his, now his disciple and everybody, he moved on to go see his mother and so she's now at her maternal, maternal, maternal uh, home, the Yachi Kram. He stayed there with her for some time. And with her permission, he, because he's still a young man, respecting his mother in this way, he went to see Nara Hari. Um, Nara Hari further gave him instruction, and eventually Nara Hari advised him that he should get married. And he even had a girl selected. And um, many of Lord Chaitanya's associates were renunciates. So he was kind of thinking, I'll be a renunciate. But here, here's Narahari, who's the senior most person, because his mother had wanted that. His mother informed Narahari, you know how it goes, and Narahari said, you should get married. 
and he had this dream when he was visiting in um, Navadvi, although Advaita Acharya had left, Advaita Acharya also, in a dream, told him he should become married. So he accepted Narahari's instruction just to fulfill the order of his superiors, and he became married. And in his place, Yaji Gram, uh, he developed a, a, a vast reputation of his speaking and his musical performances, both because he was very skilled in both of them. Um, some of you may have visited, there's a place where uh, he was engaged in, in training students and one of his, that there were, there's a, a very large tree, I forget the name of the place. And there's a road that goes right in front of the place where he was staying. And he was sitting underneath this tree, and Ram Chandra Kaviraj, on his wedding day, was proceeding. And purposely, Srinivas spoke loud enough so that Ram Chandra could hear. To see how pompous and foolish is this man had. You know, celebrating with great expenditure and pomp and splendor and bard singing his praises, all for something material. What a waste of time. And he heard from Chandra Kaviraj. So after his wedding, he came back and associated with Srinivas and became so convinced that he wanted to become his disciple. And his wife wanted to become his disciple too. So Ramachandra Kaviraj became one of his very prominent disciples. And Ramachandra Kaviraj became a very close associate of Naratam. And Naratam writes about him in his songs. So there's this affection, cross-pollination between this not They just, they were associating on the spiritual platform and drawn to the spiritual platform by the association of these very elevated Vaishnavas. Um, it, it, as it goes on, he, he, so he matures as a spiritual leader through Ramachandra Kaviraj and others. Um, he then goes again to visit Navadvip, again meets many of Vajitanya's associates. Uh, hearing that a number of those associates had since departed, since he went, he again felt very sad and became inspired to go to Vrindavan and again take Gopal Bhatta's association. So he did. And um, when he went, Naratam also went. They didn't go together, but the spiritual master of Naratam was Lokanath Goswami, the Lokanath that called Naratam. So they're together in Vrindavan again. And um, they, they were pacifying him for the loss of these great Vaishnavas. Ramchandra Kaviraj joined him, and so forth. Uh, when he returned back to Bengal, there was the disappearance I mentioned, Gadan Ardas. Gadan Ardas is one of the associates of Lord Chaitanya that was sent with Lord Nityananda to go take the holy name and spread the holy name throughout West Bengal. Very advanced devotee. He had left this world of cut our soul. Srinivas went to take part in that festival. Um, then Naratam arranged another big festival. This is Bhakti Ratnakar narration. This is Bhakti Ratnakar is a, is a biography of what happened amongst Lord Chaitanya's associates after Lord Chaitanya because the biographies of Lord Chaitanya don't cover that. So Bhakti Ratnakar covers that. So Naratama arranged for a huge festival.
festival. Six different sets of deities were installed. Janava was there. Big, 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 big event. And Srinivas did the deity installation. Um, a funeral when Raghu Nandan, you mentioned, remember his name, was the young boy who the Gopinath deity ate directly the offering from the little boy. So Raghu Nandan departed this world in Sri Kanda, so they had another big festival for him. It's like this narration of from festival to festival for different occasions, but some some sad and some happy, you know, Gaur Purnima festivals and so on. Um, when back in uh, seeing the king, the king in Vishnu Purim, uh, the king had an associate. Lord Chaitanya appeared in Srinivas's dream. The king had an associate, a friend, who was a, a very elevated Vaishnava who had a qualified daughter. And they couldn't find a qualified husband for the qualified daughter. So back in Vishnu Pura, he had a dream where Lord Chaitanya said, I want you to accept this man's daughter as your second wife. And the parents also received the same order from Lord Chaitanya, give your daughter in marriage to Srinivas. And so he just accepted it. Had a second wife. And from the second wife, daughter was born. Her name is Hemalata. Hemalata Takurani became an initiating female guru in Lord Chaitanya's line. Very, very exalted. Daughter of Srinivas Acharya. Celebrated personality. You can find out about her biography, especially. I think our ladies might be interested. Um, Srinivas Acharya was taken as the embodiment of love for Lord Chaitanya with his skill in kirtan, his skill in speaking, his compassion for others, submission to great authorities, his eagerness to receive the blessings of great authorities. Very great personality, very powerful personality, very important personality in our Line of Pacific Succession, contemporary of Naratam and Srinivasa and, and Shamananda, those three. So there's a lot, lot of names that you, you're not familiar with, but I'll say it one more time. By hearing those names again and again, the personalities start to emerge as very important personalities. They're, they're not necessarily their photograph or what they look like, but the, the, the spiritual influence that they had during their time that made it possible for us to be here today, because they continued the line of the teachings of what Chaitanya is so wonderful. Siddhanta describes it this way. He called it 
Vaishnava, Vishva, Raja Sabha. His kind. Raja Sabha, you know, the association of great souls. A Vaishnava throughout the world. He said it's it's just like a river. That sometimes it may go underground, but the river is still there, and sometimes it's above the ground. So there's always this current of Vaishnava Sangha, and sometimes it's prominent and sometimes it's not. It just needs to be realized. So without the great personalities and the string of them, then it would it just kind of disappear. That is, the teachings of Lord Chaitanya became deviated by Upasampadayas. So they took the thing and just broke it and twisted it and made it unrecognizable. There were still some, but very few, and not so common. It's like you look at the specific succession. There's, there's lists of generations that aren't listed. They were still there, but they weren't as common as the ones that, had, you know, after that, you know, few generations, and they appeared like they were. Like Baladev. Balade Vidya Bhusan, there were some generations before him that were so prominent that they're just not listed. Diksha. 
Let's take another example, Bavade. Bavade, if you're familiar with Kogia. Bavade Vijibusan wrote the commentary on um, Vedanta Sutra, Govinda Basya. You don't know? Bavade? The Bhagavad Gita is dedicated to Bavade. It's a dedication page. Bavade. So Bavade was born in a um, in, in Orissa. He went to find Guru when he was a young man, stayed at the Madhva's Mat somewhere in South India. So he received Diksha training in Madhva's teaching and Diksha there. Then he went back to his home state in Puri, or Orissa, and there in Puri, he met a follow of Lord Chaitanya, where he heard the teachings of Jiva Goswami in this form of Sandarvas, and it was wow. And then that person said, if you want to learn more, he said, wow, why don't you go spend some time in Vrindavan? And there he spent time in Vrindavan with Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur and learned further and further. So he had a diksha, but the principal connection was the shiksha. He wanted to accept diksha from this devotee in full. He said, no, you already have diksha. But what you can do is, you can commit yourself to Lord Chaitanya and his teachings. So that's what he did. Or, Prabodhananda Saraswati. You know that name? Prabodhananda Saraswati was the brother. There were three brothers in um, Tirupati when Lord Chaitanya stayed there. Venkatapata, chief priest. Prabodhananda Saraswati, his brother. And Tirumala was his other brother. So Gopal, the little boy, took Diksha from his father, from his uncle. Prabodhananda Saraswati. That was his Diksha Guru. But he went to Vrindavan and stayed in Vrindavan and he's in, you know, he's a Gauti Paisi house who took Diksha in the Sri Sampradaya. So he's one of the six Goswamis. And Gopal Bhatta had disciples. One of them was Srinivasacharya. So that's a Diksha relationship. And the Shiksha relationship is with Jiva Goswami. So they're both important. So your question specifically, what's the difference? It's the difference of prominence, where we place prominence. Diksha is necessary. More important even than Diksha is Shiksha. Both are necessary. Of the two, more important is the Shiksha. So the uh, Desha Parampara also should be authorized. Yes. Be oh yes. Yes. oh yes. One should not receive mantra from other than proper disciple succession. Yes. Of the two, Shiksha is more important. But you don't you know don't minimize the receiving mantra from disciple succession. And I also have that uh, she belongs to Madhavacharya Sampradaya and there is some difference from Madhavacharya and what we are practicing. Difference between Madhavacharya and our Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yeah, yeah, there is some there is a difference of emphasis. emphasis. Yes, there is a difference of emphasis. But it's a difference of emphasis. The, 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 the principal deity a madhva is Krishna. In Udupi, Krishna is not worshipped with Radha. Tomorrow at the Sunday Peace Program, we're going to hear something about how Radha appears by the side of Krishna. Not in Udupi, because they still worship Udupi Krishna without Radha. But it appears in the line of Madhva through Madhavendra Puri where he, 
you know, prior to him, Lakshmi Pati Tirtha was his guru, Diksha Guru. In the case of Madhavendra Puri, he entered into a state of devotion, of spontaneous devotion, where he enhanced, he deeply immersed himself in the feelings of conjugal love of Radha in separation from Krishna. In the Madhva line, it was not known the conjugal love of Radha for Krishna. And then following Madhva, excuse me, Madhavendra Puri, Ishwara Puri, and then Lord Chaitanya, who then the worship of Govindaji, you're familiar, in Vrindavan. Rupa Goswami was given two assignments, primarily. Write books and establish the places of Krishna's pastimes. Right? You're not nodding, so I, you're, you're aware of that. Those two main <laughs> services. So, of the finding of the places of, Ch of Krishna's pastimes, there was, there was a gap. And one of the gaps was he wasn't able to find the deity of Govindaji. So there's this wonderful description. One day, after searching, asking elder brahmanas, after praying, after looking through records, because he had access to records, he couldn't find the Govindaji deity anywhere. So by the side of the river Jamuna, a small blackfish coward boy came and said, you're looking so sad, what happened? I can't find you. Oh, I know where he is. So this, the narration goes like this. And the little boy took him by the hand and said, up on top of this hillock, there's a cow that comes every evening at the time of milking, and she just drops tons of milk on this spot because below, that's where Govindaji is. The earth. So in the morning, get some people and they'll help you. And you'll find Govindaji. So Govindaji came out of the ground where he was buried. And standing alone, Govindaji, but there was no Radha. So now the followers of Lord Chaitanya wanted Radha Krishna. So this is in the line of Madhva. No Radha Krishna. But coming from Madhavendra Puri, Ishwar Puri, came Radha. So Radha is now by the side, this is more story, more narration of how it happened. But Madhav Mohan and Govindaji, they were found, but no Radha, because previously the worship was done that way. It's like, like Rama Devi is not seen by Mahavishnu, because she's within. That's the understanding. The, the, the yoga nidra mood of Mahavishnu is, it's right in Brahma Samhita. She is within, and they're enjoying their eternal pastimes within. There's no, you don't see Lakshmi at the feet of Mahavishnu. So the worship of Krishna, Udhavi Krishna, was done in that mood. But the followers of Lord Chaitanya wanted to see Radha by his side because she's the internal potency, Shakti and Shakti Ma. So there's, there's a difference. In the teaching, that teaching is not Dvaita Bad, it's Achintya Deda Abeda, but derived from 